I've always been kind of weirded out by this house. It doesn't feel like we're alone at all. Every sound, every crack, it's just scaring the hell out of me. I just want to know, you know, what's going on. What is it? Who is it? Why? I feel like someone's trying to mess with me. Someone or something. But I see someone pacing. They peek out those windows. This thing is trying to mess with both of you. Oh, my god. Are you really afraid of I it? really don't like that door. You fear for your life? Yes. I don't want to be like this. This guy thinks he can break you down. I'm gonna fight. I'm gonna fight all the way down. My name is Kim Russo, and I am a psychic medium. When I was nine, I was visited by the first of many dead people who wanted to communicate with the living through me. Realizing that I couldn't ignore my abilities, I chose to embrace them. Many people are haunted by traumatic paranormal events buried in their past. Some of these people have faces you might recognize. You've heard about their paranormal experiences. Now you are about to witness the moment they take me back to the place of the haunting in the hopes of uncovering the truth. This is the haunting of T. Pain. My experience in my house so far, I mean, it's been unsettling. A year after we moved in, my wife and my family experienced very abnormal things. They heard noises or, you know, saw something happen or felt something go by them or felt somebody grab them. We call him Shadow Man because it literally looks like a shadow, like a, a freestanding shadow. I want Kim to help us understand. I just want to know, you know, what's going on? What is it? Who is it? Why? I am in Roswell, Georgia, right outside of Atlanta, and I am headed over to see T-Pain, the rapper. He is a Grammy Award-winning music producer, rapper, singer, actor. This man does it all. T-Pain has experienced this shadowy, ghost-like figure in his home. And I want to really help him get to the bottom of what this is. From what I understand, this has been going on for a while. It is causing plenty of disturbances. And it concerns me because there's children that live in this house. And I just don't know what this is. But whenever I hear something is shadowy or dark in color, it's not usually a good thing. This, this could be anything from a poltergeist to, believe it or not, a demon. And I'm a little hesitant to go there today. All my life, I think I've been skeptical about the paranormal. But my beliefs have changed uh, recently, seeing some really crazy stuff in this house we moved into. When I think I believe more than I ever have, you know, it doesn't feel like we're alone at all. Every sound, every crack, every sound of the house settling, it just, it freaks me out, so. I've always been kind of weirded out by this house. What made me think there might really be something in the house, I had just got back home from off the road. My wife, Amber, was already in bed. So I lay in the bed, and I'm kind of leaning on my side because I'm about to plug my phone up. 
As I'm leaning over, I feel Amber tap me on my side. Right here, boom, twice, real hard. And I look back at her, and she's on her phone, like just looking at her phone. And she looks at me like, what, what did I do? And I'm like, what? What you do that for? What do you want? And I'm like, you just tapped me super hard. What did you want? I did not touch you. I didn't lay a hand on you, I didn't move. And she looked me in my eyes and, and said, hey, I'll tell you the truth, I did not touch you. Touch you. Scared the crap out of me. So one morning, my wife got up before I did and started going to get the kids ready for school. Sweetie, you're gonna be late. And my son just, you know, he kind of wouldn't wake up. Sweetie. He wasn't opening his eyes. He wasn't responding to anything that she was doing. And then she felt a draft coming from this little, this little door in his room. It's, it's a creepy little door. She looked back, and it was open. We've never opened that door, like, ever. We don't even know where a key is to that door. And when it was open, it, it, it scared her to death. And all of a sudden, pow, just slammed shut. And the second that the door closed, my son woke up and just looked directly at his mother and said, Mommy, if you do circles, he'll go away. Then he'll go away. And then he fell right back asleep. Music, what? What's, what's even scarier is that that door was locked again after that. And that was, that still freaks me out to that day. I don't go, I don't go towards that door. But then there was one night. Hey. My daughter, Lyric, came down to my master bedroom at three in the morning. She. She said, Daddy, there's a man standing in my doorway. At the time, uh, my father-in-law was living with us. And I was just like, you know, maybe it's, maybe it's granddad. I think it's grandpa you're talking about. She was like, it's not granddad. I know what granddad looks like. There's a man standing in my doorway right now. And I just passed by him to come tell you that he's still standing there right now. The way she was describing it, this was a full-grown man. She was shaking. So that kind of scared me, too. I told you, Snowy. I looked in the doorway, oh. and nobody was there. I checked her granddad's room. He's still asleep. I got her back to bed. And I was just like sitting in bed, kind of gathering up my own thoughts and my own fears about what the hell's going on in here? Why here? And why us? And I guess he got angry. And one of the bedroom doors just slammed shut. Boom! And then the other one, I mean, that scared me straight. I didn't know what to do. There's no kind of, there was no wind, the AC didn't come on, nothing. There's no way that I can explain what happened to our room door. <laughs> I try to come at these situations as, as positive as I can, but it's just scaring the hell out of me. I think what bothers me the most about this whole experience and about everything that's going on is just the uncertainty. The shadow man that we call shadow man has been all around the house, you know, in my club area, 
uh, in my bedroom, in my doorway, in my daughter's bedroom, and I want Kim to help us understand what's going on. I've already been getting a lot of visions today since early this morning. The man that I'm seeing, this is not modern day clothing that he's wearing. This man looks like he has some money, but he's young. He's very young to have all this money. He's a smooth talking type of guy, like, like a typical salesperson that can sell you ice in the winter. I don't trust him though. I, I don't know who this guy is. And I smell bourbon. There's bourbon somewhere. Someone liked to drink a lot. I just got this burning sensation in my chest. Wow, I just see, I see blood all over bed linens that may have something to do with the shadowy figure. This guy did not go to the light. I have several people here. I have a bunch of men. They all have the initial R. Rick or Richard. They look like they died in their 50s. They feel connected to T-Pain like an uncle would be. I can already feel anxiety building up. I feel like someone's trying to mess with me. Someone or something. Oh, here we go. There's definitely something here. We have a I keep hearing somebody's name as I get closer to this house. He keeps I saying, I Welcome, I'm Joe. He keeps saying, My name is Joe. So he's, somebody's welcoming me. That's weird. I hope that's one of the relatives of uh, T Pain and his wife. I keep seeing that man, that, that young guy in his 20s. But I see someone pacing the hallways up there. They just keep going back and forth, and they peek out those windows. He's like jittery. He's anxious. He's, he's pacing. He's nervous about something. I wonder if he's nervous that I'm here and I'm going to out him. There is something in here, in this house, that shouldn't be. It's trying to find a way back into this world. I see someone pacing the hallways up there. I keep seeing that man. He's like jittery. He's anxious. I wonder if he's nervous that I'm here and I'm going to out him. How you doing, T Pain? Should I call you T? You can call me T, you can call me Pain, you can call me Sir, you can call me Ma'am, as long as I know you're talking to me. It's really a pleasure to meet you. Yeah, it's a pleasure I to meet you. I am a big well. fan of your song. Oh, thank you, thank you. Oh, wow. I ha oh, that's so nice. Thank you. This is so nice. Thank you. I hear you have a lot of activity going on here. It's been a journey. It's been a journey. Do it's, you, it's been. Do you believe in the afterlife? Of course. Of you course, do. Of course. Okay. Of course, of course. And yes. do, do, do you feel a threat in this home? I do feel a presence. Oh, I yeah. do feel presence, and I just, you know. That, is that what everyone's sort of feeling already? Everyone's feeling that, and my wife, Amber, feels it, sees it. This is a daily, daily occurrence. This is a daily occurrence. Really? So, and how do the yeah. kids react? Uh, the kids, they see it too. Are they afraid? Yeah. 
And they can't all be making this up. No. I'm just curious, you fear for your life? Really? Yes. OK. I just want to tell you, before we start out, you know I'm a medium, right? Mm. So I will tune into the energy that's in the home, mm -hmm. that's connected to you, that's right. connected to your wife, right. whoever is here. Mm -hmm. it, anything can happen. So are you are you OK with that? Yeah. Where, where would you say a lot of the activity has taken place? It's really all over the house. I mean, downstairs and upstairs. You have a downstairs? Why don't you want to go, go downstairs first? OK. So why is. don't you lead the way? I'll lead the way. This is uh, quite the home. There's a lot of room for things to be happening, so this is the garage area. Oh, look at these cars. These are antique cars, right? Right. I'm pretty into old school stuff. Do you know who owned them before? Oh, no. There's been a lot of antique cars around here, and uh, one of them was a hearse, actually, with a coffin in it. I customized a hearse. Wait, what? I bought a hearse from a funeral home that was going out of business. Why? Uh, it just seemed like a different thing to do. The casket. Did it belong to someone? Uh, no, I mean, we didn't have to pour anybody out of it. You went looking for it? Yeah. I went looking for it. Yeah. OK. Well, that puts a little bit of an additional spin on things. A little bit. You have to understand how many souls went in and out of that, that car, OK? Mm -hmm. And they don't all go to the light. And they can bring entities with them. There's a big connection there to something that's here in this house. I'd love to see where the image of the man was seen. Sure, let's do that. I'll, I'll feel more as I go through. This is the, what we call the club area, and this is where a lot of activity happens. Oh, look at this. And the entertainment. You have, you have mannequins. Yeah, yeah, a couple things. When I was standing outside, I felt a presence that paces from one side of your home to the other. Uh, yeah, uh, yeah, that's the one I know that goes back and forth. How do you know that? People have seen him pass these doors. Amber can see solid person. OK. Uh, who is this dude, Joe? Joe you know. was welcoming me into his into the home. Uh, he's an older man. We need Amber. Let's let's get Amber. Let's get I'll get Amber. Amber. Hey Amber. Kim. Nice <laughs> to meet <laughs> you. Oh, Amber. You're Amber so Kim. pretty. Thank you. <laughs> Some gentleman Joe met me at the door and said, "Welcome, welcome to come in." My grandfather's name is Joseph. So it's him. Mm -hmm. He's your guardian angel. Uh, he serves as your protector. This mm -hmm. is so crazy. Yeah. Oh, Can we move into this room and tell me what you see here typically? Do you what? ever come in here and hang out? Sometimes. And so not by myself, be, though. Be, no, you won't come No, by not by myself. <laughs> mm -hmm. And we work out, we work out in here sometimes. So sometimes she just be like, oh, the guy is watching us work out. And, <laughs> and she always looks, and he's always, according to her, standing right, right there and watching us nook. work out. So basically, anything that ex has been experienced in this room has been just what you saw there. This is where one of those pillows on the couch just flew. Across the room? Across the room. And nobody was nobody there? Nobody was there. Mm. There is something in here, in this house, that shouldn't be. It's trying to find a way back into this world. There's this <laughs> feeling like I'm anxiety-ridden. That's how we feel all the time. Yeah. <laughs> I'm uncomfortable in this room.
There is something in here in this house that shouldn't be. It's trying to find a way back into this world. The man I saw, he was wearing flashy rings. He was wearing um, trousers, a vest, uh -huh. um, a brimmed hat, mustache, goatee. Oh my gosh. I've seen him. I don't know who he is, but I, the seen... hat and everything. Okay. Like from a different period Era. of time, yes. Okay. Very clear. He, he's, he's young though, he's not, he's maybe 20s. And he's jittery, like he has this, like he's waiting for something, he's um, anxious. Yes. Uh, and he has a, uh... <laughs> he never stops thinking, like he has this sad energy. Very yeah. sad. Yes, I feel sad when he comes around. Well, well, and he paces. He, that's the guy that I saw pacing back yeah. and forth, back yeah. and forth. There have been other images that I've been getting. I felt a slew of people connected to you and connected to you in the car. They started coming early. They started talking to me. I feel might be your father figures or uncles. Uh, and they seem to have the initial R, like some guy, Rick. Rick is my, is oh my, my uncle. God. That's my uncle. Yeah. He's, yeah. he's on the other side. Yeah, yeah. yeah. He, he said Robert as well. Robert is... Is that his brother? That's my dad's name. That's your dad's name? Yeah. Rick is talking about the, the minister in the family or the preacher in the That's family. That's my dad. He preaches? Yeah. He, yeah. <laughs> but I, I see it like on a stage, like a pulpit. It's not like an every Sunday thing. It's like people call him to like come, like please come speak here. And, like he's a, basically a speaker. Okay. And Uncle Rick said he comes to you in your dreams. Do you know this? Oh my God. Mm -hmm. He's giving you, um... It's almost like he's a preacher too, because in your sleep I feel like he preaches to you or he tells you... Yeah these, like, you need to let things go. Mm -hmm. Like, he, he comes like a father. Because, right. let me tell you how he's saying it to me. He said, for you to listen to your father's sermons, it, it means it won't penetrate, maybe because it's your own dad. Probably. But if Uncle Rick tells you the exact same thing as your dad would, mm -hmm. you would respect it and honor it. Mm -hmm. Does that make sense? That makes yes. total sense. So that's why he seemed to have taken over that job as your guardian mm. from the other side. Nice. Is your father on a, a list for a kidney? Um, heart. I see dialysis. That's my brother. Oh, it's like frick and frack when I see your father and your brother. It's like two pieces, like they don't, yeah. they're inseparable. Yeah. And, and, and I'll tell you what Uncle Rick said, it's, they, they cry on each other's shoulders. Right. And we're the victims. Exactly. Poor me. And yeah. He said that um, there's other things with your brother breaking down, unfortunately, and I don't know if you know that. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, you he's are definitely not taking care of himself no, he's not. at all. No, he's not. He's not. No. Um, Uncle Rick said that you've tried that whole tough love thing with your brother, maybe not talking to him or being mad at him. Mm -hmm. It's almost like, do you love me for me or do you love me for what I can give you? Mm -hmm. It's hard for me to say that, by the way, because I, yes. I mean, met you two minutes ago. Right, right. Yeah. No, that's 100% <laughs> accurate. I, I feel like, you know, we just got right into it with your family right off the bat. So you can put it all together and know mm -hmm. that I'm tapped in. Yes. Right. But there's a message in all of this from mm -hmm. your uncle, and I have to figure out what it is. Right. Mm -hmm. um, you said something about your bedroom was on the first floor, like bedroom, right when you walk in. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. You have activity there? Yes. yes we have to go. Yeah. Would you mind taking me there? Yes. We can go right Good? up there. Good? Okay. I'll Good follow master. you. I'll follow okay. you.
So this is the master. Master. Oh, this has a, a vibe to it in here. Like, um, there's a different energy in oh, there. Oh, that's a whole nother yes. thing going on like, in there. I can't explain it. There's this feeling on my, like, like I'm anxiety ridden in this room. Yes. There's a lot of that. That's how we feel all the time. Yeah. I'm uncomfortable in this room. He's depressed and he's agitated. This thing is trying to mess with both of you. I'm anxiety ridden in this room. Yes. There's a lot of that. That's how we feel all the time. <laughs> yeah. I'm uncomfortable in this room. How do you sleep in this room? Do you uh, sleep well? Not no, good. Not that no. Good. no. <laughs> we don't sleep good at all. I didn't think I didn't <laughs> feel you did because I feel like there's some energy that keeps like waking you up or trying to get you up. I'm always waking up. Out like, of nowhere, right? Just all the time. Like yes. nonstop. I probably sleep like five minutes at a time. When you wake up, physically, what are you feeling? I'm scared. One night we were just laying in the bed and those doors, both do of those doors just slammed. These look like heavy doors. They do not close on their own. It like, takes a all. lot of force to close Like it's them. not, there's no spring. This is heavy. Yeah, this, this is not, solid. Yeah. Did you get up and investigate? Yeah. I mean, I opened the door, looked out the thing, shined the light down the hallway as far as I was going. I figured there was no one actually there because, I mean, you got to be Stretch Armstrong to close. There's a door here, and there's a door around how, this corner. And they both And they went. both closed at the same time. So I knew that wasn't one person. I have to just tell you, this is nothing to take lightly, even though at this point, you're still alive and well. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, this is how energy that lives in your home can start to break you down. It can start with the anxiety. It breaks down mm -hmm. your strength, your right. confidence. Uh, you, you become weaker. God forbid it touches the kid's energy. Mm -hmm. um, there's something here that should not be here, and that's the bottom line. And it's, it doesn't feel safe to me. And I keep feeling that same guy from that other century. And I smell bourbon. There's bourbon somewhere. This guy liked to drink. He was yeah, a that's... drinker. Yeah. Uh-oh. You've been drinking a little bit too often? Oh, yeah. well, not as much as I used to. It's, it's but gotten at better. One point, it it's had gotten, gotten really bad. In yeah. this home? Oh, mm -hmm. yeah. Oh, yeah, for like two years, it was just, I had, I had alcohol. And, <laughs> and it, maybe it calmed you down? It just, it, it didn't calm me down. It made it worse. It well, made me, think, it's, that yeah. was just. But it somehow connects on, on in some way. There's there's a reason that this man is attracted here, uh, to, usually to people that either they have something in common with, mm -hmm. or they can identify with you for some reason. I think this guy's trying to get you to drink again. Misery loves company. Right. Yes. Right. Right. He's trying to feel justified in, in what he, w the way he lived his life, and he, he's. There's something that I keep sensing here. This overwhelming, burning, feeling like right in the middle, and I kept seeing in the car blood-filled sheets on a bed. And it's, it's, it's connected somehow to you. We have to unstick this energy. We have to unlock it. Yes. I just want to get to more of the reason. What, what else did you experience in this room? Anything crazy? He was also tapped really hard. Oh, uh, yeah. What? I was, uh over charging my phone about to lay down and I 
leaned over this way to charge my phone, and I felt like, like that hard. And I, I looked back at her like, what? What do you want? You, you like, were next to me. What are you talking she, about? And she was on her, she was on her phone. Like she was not even close enough to me to where she did. Could've she would have had to lean and like crawl a little oh, bit in order God. to tap me. Like yeah, like I, like it was. That would have started an argument. Like what? That's did, how hard. Like why did you tap me that hard? Yeah, like, this this thing is trying to mess with both of you. It's trying to make you lose your mind because he's depressed and he's agitated. He can't just calm himself. So when you guys are trying to go to sleep, he knows he'll get more agitated if the house is so quiet right. and if there's no activity and there's no energy to mm -hmm. feed him. Mm -hmm. He doesn't want that. He doesn't ever want you guys to go to sleep. Um, oh, wow. It is chipping away at you little by little. And then you're too weak to deal with the consequences. What is that? What does this lead to? I'm gonna it go leads ahead and into... let her tell you that. Wait, what, are you really afraid of I that? I really don't like that door. <laughs> he doesn't ever want you guys to go to sleep. It is chipping away at you little by little, and then you're too weak to deal with the consequences. And it's been a lot lately. I'm coming home off tour, and I would go down to my studio and just sit there. I couldn't work and create creative uh, block. Oh yeah, yeah, big time block. And I would just sit there, and okay. it's not something that I that I want to do anymore. Something stopping you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. There's a, a struggle going on in this house. Um, I'm a little concerned about the children. My son, Music's room, he's seen stuff in there. And he calls it the bad man, the bad shadow man. OK. Could we go where they saw this man? Okay. Oh, this poor child. And this is Music's room? There's stuff. Oh boy. Yeah. What is what is that? That's something I don't I don't I don't mess with this door. What what does this lead to? I'm gonna it go leads ahead and into... let her tell you that. Wait, what are you really afraid of? I that? really don't like that door. Tell me why. And she'll tell you why. There's something that happened. It is I don't like that door. Okay. A while back I came in to wake music up for school and I came in and my back was towards the door and I was trying to wake him up and he would not wake up for anything. And then I felt like this really, really cold on my back. And right I here. turned. You well, were standing right here? Or no, you were... I was standing close to the bed. Okay. And I felt the cold on my back and I turned around and the door was wide open. Oh. And it was closed when you walked in? Mm-hmm. Closed and locked. Once he did wake up, he said, Mommy, if you just make circles, He'll go away. Wait, wait. What do you mean? Like this? He, he said, started his doing fingers? this in the air. He said, he said "Mommy, if you circles. just make circles, he'll <sighs> go away." There's no way your eight-year-old son should know this. He's absolutely correct about that. By the way, that's so crazy. <laughs> when you create a sphere or a circle mm -hmm. of energy, mm -hmm. it can actually, if you notice the mo the motion, it can catch the spirit in, in, its, in its web, almost, like a web. Mm -hmm. It can keep them contained in the circle, like a portal That's or okay. a vortex. Right. Yeah. So your son will envision whatever this entity is stepping into the circle and just going round and round, chasing its tail. That sounds like you sometimes. Yeah. Yeah. And there's no, <laughs> and there's no reason for it. I, I don't want to be like this. There's no reason for me not to be happy. This guy doesn't like when you do fun and happy things. This man, um, I keep picking up. I, his name is William. I'm hearing William. OK. Uh, he, I, I feel somebody sh shot him at close range. Oh, my god. So I feel it, the burning oh, sensation. Man. Oh, 
Mm. Um, I think this guy took his own life, actually. I don't even think someone killed him. That's how hard and how deep his pain was. Yeah. And somehow he's coexisting in this home. Did you just get a huge chill? I saw that. Uh, yeah. Have you ever thought of taking your own life? This guy thinks maybe he can break you down. I think this guy took his own life, actually. And somehow he's coexisting in this home. Have you ever thought of taking your own life? Like, oh, yeah. Many times. Many times. <laughs> Numerous. I understand. People were just like, what is, what's been wrong with pain? What's been going on with him, man? It's been, I know There's I'm no not reason for this him way. not to be happy. You beat and, yourself up. Yeah. yeah. It becomes a vicious cycle. We need to talk about how to fix this. Yes. Um, this guy thinks maybe he can break you down again. Uh, why? Because it justifies what he did. Mm hmm It makes it okay in his world. Yeah. Okay. Okay? Uh, what's below it in this room? What does this lead to? The garage. Yeah. This is definitely where William originated from. Oh, God. Um, but I believe your house could be cleared again, and you can be you again. That would be great. You can have yourself that. back. Why don't we go and chat? Why don't we do that? Yeah. OK. Now I'm going to go check on the kids. OK. So maybe I'll we'll see you later? Yes. All right, hon? Thank you Thanks. so much. <laughs> Thanks for yeah. Helping us Never. out. I want to ask you a question. I remember you with the dreadlocks. Yeah, yeah. Where are the dreadlocks? Actually, uh, <laughs> my uh, my uncle came to me in my dream and told me that. Uncle Rick? Yeah, and he told me I needed to get rid of them. Did he really? Yeah. He said, once I make that change, because I, th there were people around me that were bringing me down. And he said, you know, I was afraid of change and I couldn't, I was afraid to fire people and I was afraid to get rid of people and I didn't want anything to change around me because I didn't know what was gonna happen after that. And he said, once you make the biggest change you can make, then everything else would be nothing. How long ago was that? It's uh, two years ago. Oh, okay, two years. It's that time again, and that's what your Uncle Rick is talking about. What was hanging on two years ago is still hanging on. You, you're dragging around too much dead weight, and that includes this guy, William. Mm -hmm. He was in the depths of despair with drinking. He didn't feel good about himself. Money could buy everything for him but happiness. Right. And he succumbed to his demons, and he took his own life. And you said you've been there. Oh, yeah. This guy, William, that's hanging around this house mm -hmm. is waiting so close to you for you to have that other, that other weak moment. There's a trail of energy from the garage. And this guy, William, that's hanging around this house, mm -hmm. you brought him here with the hearse. So we need to tell him to go packing He's trapped in his misery. What words of encouragement would you give him? Because you pulled yourself out of it. Uh, I mean, I would be able to say it can change. Change is hard for everybody, you know, until you accept it yourself. Realness, I would tell him, he's not going to break me down. It's not going to happen. Because I'm going to stay strong. As long as my family is here, I'm going to fight. I'm going to fight all the way down. OK. He hears you. Loud and clear. He's gone on. Yeah. And you yeah. know what I think also? 
There's a whole new angle coming up for you. This is a prediction now. This right. is this is a reading. It's more in in a producer's role. Yeah, I just started getting into the movies. Oh, you you produce movies? Yeah, I helped out on the uh, Series Seven, and we just did one with uh, Melissa McCarthy. But is is it known that you're a producer on those shows? No, no. Okay, nobody knows that. No. Yeah, because no. I <laughs> I thought this was yeah, a prediction no. I was giving you, and it is. Oh yeah. And so I'll take that as truth. I'll take that as a validation. We'll make it happen. Do you feel better? I feel a lot better. I feel a whole bunch better. You definitely let me know some stuff and gave me some answers. So that was uh, very, very enlightening. All right, so how yeah, about? There it is. Boom. Shakalaka. <laughs> Shakalaka indeed. <laughs> <laughs> Bring it in here. Give me some of that. <laughs> Working with Kim, it was great. I think there's been a change, like, so far. There's been a change from earlier today to now. I got confirmations today. William's gonna have to uh, find somewhere else because this family is, is a no-go for him right now. And I, I feel like we're gonna, we're gonna succeed in, in making this house warm again. And that, you know, that's more valuable than anything else. Looking back, T-Pain desperately wanted to unravel the mystery of the paranormal experiences occurring regularly at his home in Georgia. Together with his wife, Amber, we discovered that the spirit of a depressed man who identified with T-Pain was feeding off his personal demons and really dragging him down. We also learned that T-Pain's uncle Rick, a mentor in life, was still guiding and encouraging him from the other side. T-Pain's own experience teaches us that looking inside ourselves may be the most challenging but also the most rewarding way to find inner peace.